Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, Wooden Railway Adventures, Episode 215, Tyrannical Rex. The Arsdale Railway had been in a bit of a slump lately. After Sailor John's dynamite stand exploded in spectacular fashion, the passengers were worried that the small railway wasn't safe, and they stopped riding on the trains. This meant bad news for the little engines. I don't understand, protested Mike. The dynamite stand isn't even on our railway. It's way over there on the standard gauge line. And yet the passengers don't want to ride on our trains? Sounds about right, grumbled Frank. The passengers think they know it all, but they can't even boycott the right railway. No, Frank, I'm not talking about cotton. I'm talking about the passengers. Stay focused, please. Just then, Bert puffed in with a small train. There was no need for any more coaches than there were people. On the bright side, the trains are easier to pull, he chuckled. But Sir Topham Hatt was concerned. The small railway survives on tourism, he told Duck one morning. No tourist means no railway. There needs to be a reason why the tourists should visit Arsdale, suggested Duck. Perhaps a special attraction of some sort? No, Bulstrode's working at the docks now. I don't think he would be up for another round on the beach. Duck laughed. I'm not saying we need Bulstrode. We just need something like him that would gather attention and interest. Sir Topham Hatt smiled. I know just what to do. It will be a risky gamble, but hopefully it will save the small railway in the long run. A few weeks later, the three small engines were sitting around the turntable. There were no trucks and hardly any passengers. Everyone was bored. Hey Frank, have your driver spin the turntable around again. It gives us something to look at. Just then, Sir Topham Hatt walked up. I have some exciting news, he proclaimed. Rex and Jock are coming back to the Arsdale Railway. Bert and Frank gasped. They hadn't seen their friends in a long time. Mike, on the other hand, was a little more skeptical. Huh, he grumbled. I'm not falling for that one again. But a few minutes later, Rex puffed in and screeched to a stop. Hey boys, I'm back from my overhaul. What do you think? The engines cheered. You look spectacular, they said. Do I know you? asked Frank cheekily. Oh, come on, Frank. You could never forget an engine like me. Then the engines heard a deep whistle. The rails rumbled and the ballast bounced. In a cloud of steam, Jock thundered in and stopped on the turntable. I'm back, he chuckled. Wow, everything looks so different. Bert, you're smaller than I remember. Hey there, Frank, you look really old. And Mike, poor little Mike. I still haven't recovered from that trick you played on me, you know. Mike smiled sheepishly. I can't believe you're both really here, he said. Oh man, Rexy and I have been in overhaul for far too long. We were so excited when we heard the news. Now where are the coaches and the passengers? I want to pull a train real bad. Well, that's the thing, said Frank. Did Sir Totten Hat not tell you what was going on? asked Bert. No, he didn't say anything. What's the matter? Well, our railway has been rather empty lately. We haven't had a lot of passengers and the ballast trains are hit and miss. But no worries. We're hoping you two can bring back the spark and people will start visiting our railway again. We'll definitely try, laughed Jock. I better go sit up on that ledge so that the passengers can see me. It's called a ballast chute, reminded Frank. Oh dear, I bet you he's forgotten everything about our little railway. Regardless, the engines were happy to be reunited with their friends. Jock took it upon himself to try and draw a crowd to the Arsdale Railway, and thought it was very important that he remain stationed on the ballast chute day and night. 
I'm a very spectacular engine, he said to himself. This railway won't fail with me in charge. But Rex didn't agree. He had been holed up with Jock for years during their overhauls and had become rather annoyed with his pompous attitude. The other engines, however, lapped it up. Jock is so confident, sighed Mike. If only I could be half the engine that he is. He's very strong, added Bert, and his dedication to the line is quite apparent. I bet you a rainstorm could roll through and Jock wouldn't move an inch from that spot. He looks very silly up there, huffed Frank. But if that's what saves our railway, then he can do whatever he wants. Rex began to feel unappreciated. His friends only wanted to talk about Jock and how great he was, and they had no interest in him. A few days later, he took a run to stretch his wheels and relearn the line. Near the abandoned mine at Arsdale, he stopped for a rest. So the engine's like someone who's bossy and confident, huh? I can be like that. I can talk about how great I am. I can order everybody about, just like Jock. Let's see how they like that. Rex had made up his mind. He wasn't going to settle for Jock's arrogant attitude anymore. All right, everybody, you have all been sitting around the turntable for years waiting for me to arrive back home. And now that I'm finally here, I think it's time that some work was done. Frank, move your greasy wheels and stop oiling up the track there. Mike, find some ballast cars and fill them with rocks. That's a perfect job for a dull engine like you. Bert, lose the weird accent and start talking like the rest of us. And Jock, get down from there and start pulling your own on this railway. Any engine can sit up there and look pretty, and you've been doing enough of that. The engines were shocked at Rex's comments. What's gotten into you? asked Bert. Why are you being so mean? quizzed Mike. You were never like this before. You're acting like a tyrant, added Frank bossing everybody about with no plans of working yourself. Oh, I am going to work, he retorted. I'll be taking Jock's place at the top of the chute. That will be my job. Hopefully, my sparkly green paint will lure passengers to the railway, and then my brash attitude can scare them away. Is, is this about me, Rex? You seem awfully upset. I didn't mean to come off as rude. Well, you have been full of yourself ever since you came back, conceded Frank. I understand Rex's position here, but ordering us about is no way to fix this problem. Frank's right, said Bert. Our railway is in trouble. This is no time for quarreling. Oh, I'm sorry, everybody, said Rex. I was acting really mean just then. You all seem so happy to see Jock, and I was only trying to fit in. And I'm sorry too, added Jock. That overhaul really got the best of me. I'm no better than the rest of you, even if I can pull heavier and longer trains. But that's not the point. I'm just really happy to be back, and I apologize in advance if I come across as bossy or arrogant. I want to make up for all of that lost time on the rails, you know? Let's all make up for lost time, said Mike. We can return the small railway to its former glory, but it's going to require a lot of work from all of us. That's the spirit, cheered Bert, and it looks like we might have some passengers after all. Jock and Rex, bay our guests and show them around our beautiful railway. Although things had gotten off to a rough start, Rex and Jock quickly reconciled and pulled the train together. With the fate of the railway at stake, it was time for the Arsdale engines to come together and put their best wheel forward.